Hi, welcome to Between the Bags and Boards. Today we finally look at the Avengers relaunch as a part of Marvel Now. It's going to be written by Jonathan Hickman, and this issue's art is done by the amazing Jerome Pena. The story begins with the current Avengers consisting of Cap, Iron Man, Hulk, Hawkeye, Black Widow, and Thor rushing to Mars to investigate the source of mysterious projectiles being launched at Earth. Apparently, these projectiles have caused widespread changes to the local biospheres, essentially reworking billions of years of evolution in the process. On Mars, we see that the culprits are a duo of nearly cosmic entities called Ex Nihilo and Abyss, as well as a murderous rob robot named Aleph. They hint at their reasons by claiming humanity is simply too dangerous and threatens quote-unquote everything. Once the Avengers arrive, they're handily beaten down by their new adversaries. While the rest are captured, Captain America is sent back to Earth as a message. However, we all know Cap doesn't lie down easily. He puts in motion a system set up by Iron Man himself that calls on a number of reserve Avengers across the world. With a large force, Cap seems prepped to take the fight back to Mars next issue. The biggest discernible difference between Hickman's Avengers and more recent iterations is a difference in scale. Though it seems impossible for Earth's mightiest heroes to be facing problems bigger than they already have, Hickman somehow pulls it off. Interestingly, this issue serves as an introduction by not changing the guard, but by bolstering it. If these reserves are here to stay, what do you think of a team that's made up over 20 people? Is that too much? I don't think 20 people on the Avengers is too many. Um, like even Captain America and Iron Man said, that you need a bigger roster to combat a bigger problem. It makes sense for the Avengers, okay. We, you have bigger problems, you need people to take care of them. But for a comic book, I think 20 people are way too many. Well, he can pick and choose. Um, if we kind of look at... Is it going to be like single issues where they pick and choose? Because if it's like an arc, you're going to see these like maybe five, six characters for an arc. And then for a whole other arc, you're just, you know, for six issues, which is equivalent to about three months because it's coming out every right twice a month. So that's, you're not going to be seeing characters. So you sort of lose touch but with I, them. But I think that's okay. I think when you just have stories that just contain the kind of core Avengers... Those stories have been told over and over again, and I, now he's mixing I, I and matching new I, characters. Which... I agree with that, but you know, what if we just got rid of the core Avengers and had new people? You had maybe like one core Avenger and then new people, as opposed to just having a massive pool. I mean, I, if anyone can make this work, I guess it's Hickman. Right. But uh, it, I think the problem is that a lot of these characters, they have the ability to like you know, be on their own run by themselves, so to... Give them enough. I'm not sure all of them do have the ability to be on their own run. I think some of them do, though. So, I mean, we can take a look at them, because he does a great graphic. The center is comprised of the original Avengers, Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Iron Man, Hawkeye, and the Hulk. Captain America's team consists of Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, formerly Mrs. Marvel, Falcon, and Shang-Chi. Iron Man's team consists of Wolverine, Spider-Man, Sunspot, and Cannonball. Sunspot and Cannonball are two New Mutant characters. Thor's team consists of Hyperion, who is from Earth-712, whose powers are very similar to Superman. Captain Universe, this is actually a new incarnation. The character is powered by the Unipower, which relates to the Microverse. The power works similarly to Nova, and how he is powered by the Nova Force. The third person on Thor's team is Smasher, a member of the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Right now we only know of one member of Hawkeye's team, Manifold. Created by Hickman in The Secret Warriors, basically a super teleporter, he can also alter and bend reality itself. There are also two huge question marks on either end of the graphic. That's a lot of people. <laughs> so and I, do you think they're actually going to be divided in teams? I do think they're going to be divided into teams with the kind of a core Avenger taking the lead, because they have the experience of being an Avenger. So it would it be like, instead of how it used to be, new Avengers would be a different team than the these Avengers, you think all the Avengers are going to be in the same title, but they just have separate arcs dealing with... Definitely. I think that's exactly how it's going to be. It's going to be specific arcs f uh, for specific teams. And I'm sure there will be some overlap. Yeah. But uh, pretty much that kind of breakdown. Who do you think these two unknowns are? I mean, they're definitely bigger circles than the other unknowns right now. Um, if it is a... Uh, if, we, if it is the, the splitting... In, they're not going to be like a new, the new Avengers. We know it's going to be a lot more of a, like you saw a little panel in the book where it sort of shows Reed Richards and all these other people. Maybe one of them is actually going to be involved in the b bigger Avengers as well. Or it could just be, since the new Avengers appears to be the Illuminati, one of those circles could just be the Illuminati as a whole. and maybe Oh, those... just like a big organization. That's yeah. So one, one of them could just be uh, Shield. Shield and then the other is the Illuminati. Or... or one could be Uncanny Avengers. Yeah. 
Okay, that makes sense. I was sense. also thinking if uh, we're looking at very specific people to be this one circle, I could see maybe Hope being one. She's been kind of absent since AVX, and she had such a big role. I think I if, if she's going to be in anything, she's going to be in Uncanny Avengers. Moving on, let's look at the uh, villains for this Avengers run. I loved them. They were new and sort of mysterious, and they're not necessarily... They, they don't go straight to violence. Like, El, uh, the Nilo basically says that... ex Nilo says that he do, he basically doesn't want to go to uh, violence first because he's all about creating new life and all this other type and of stuff. And he thinks he's trying to help them. Yeah, exactly, because they're just too dangerous. It's always kind of cool when a villain just comes in and, like, just kicks the shit out of the Avengers because <laughs> that, that way you know they're legit. Uh, yeah, that's very true. What did you think of that droid? It, it reminded me so much of that Star Wars uh, assassination droid. Uh, HK-47? Yeah, or... exactly. Uh, yeah, definitely reminded me a little of that, or kind of almost like Ultron or something. It, it didn't... I, I, I don't see how he's related to the other two. The other two seem to be like cosmic beings, and this is just like a the robot walking around with them. I'm sure Hickman will uh, you know, uncover that a lot more. In future yeah. things. I mean, definitely in this first issue, you can see Hickman's writing style is unique compared to uh, Bendis's, which was the previous Avengers run. And we're already dealing with a lot more with the cosmic stuff that he dealt with, with the Future Foundation and Fantastic Four. And As a grade, what would you give this uh, first issue? I'd give it a 4.5. 4.5? I'm going to give this a 5. It just blew me away. <laughs> So we're sealing up this issue of Between the Bags and Boards. But before we finish, we have one question for you, the viewer. Who do you think the two big unknowns are? Please leave your answer below in the comments, or you can reach us on Twitter or on our Tumblr page. Check out our Marvel Now Power Rankings and look at our other videos. And please subscribe and thumbs up this video. Thanks.